Have you ever wondered why we have so many different types of grill and diffuser in air conditioning? I mean they all do the same job right, which is to provide airflow. So why do we need different shapes and patterns? To seek for answer, we need to understand how airflow is affected by the patterns and why certain types of diffuser is used in certain applications. Welcome to Aircon Lounge, I'm Yu, and today we'll learn about different types of grills and diffuser in air conditioning. First of all, why do we even need a diffuser or a grill? In a ducted air conditioning system, we run rigid duct and stop at the point where we want to provide the airflow. Then, we use a flexible duct and connect it to the diffuser. Now, why can't we just run the duct all the way to the ceiling and leave it there? I mean, there will be nothing blocking the airflow, we will have less air resistance, and we save costs. The reason why we can't do that is, obviously, the ceiling will look very weird with a few holes here and there. But we can solve this by covering them with a net. So why do we need this type of fancy looking diffuser? Well, it has something to do with the air velocity. We all have experience going into a car in the afternoon on a hot day. We start the car and the first thing we do is turn on the air conditioner. The feeling of cold air blasting onto our face is really good. But how long does it take for you to start feeling uncomfortable? After 10 minutes or so, you start to feel too cold and your face start to dry out. What I'm trying to say here is, if the air velocity is too high, it is uncomfortable for the people sitting under the diffuser. You see, air conditioning ducts are typically designed at an air velocity of around 1500 feet per minute or 7.62 meter per second. This velocity is good for the duct, but as a supply airflow, this velocity is too high. According to S-ray standard 62.1, 6 feet or 1.8 meter from the floor is defined as the breathing zone. To ensure occupants comfort, the supply airflow must be at a velocity between 50 and 100 feet per minute before entering the breathing zone. Diffusers are designed to spread out the airflow and make sure the air is not moving too fast. They need to reduce the air velocity from 1500 feet per minute to 100 feet per minute. Obviously, the velocity is not reduced immediately. There are two steps to this process. First, the diffuser must reduce the air velocity from 1005 to 500 feet per minute. This is done by selecting the right diffuser size. As for the second step, the air velocity need to be reduced from 500 feet per minute at the diffuser to 100 feet per minute before entering the breathing zone. The distance which the air travels from the diffuser to where it reaches 100 feet per minute is known as throw. By selecting the right diffuser size and throw distance, the air velocity and noise can be controlled. In other words, if you use the wrong diffuser, either the air velocity will be too high or the diffuser will be too noisy. Now, what's that have to do with the diffuser patterns? It turns out different patterns have different characteristics, meaning one pattern is good in controlling noise, the other pattern may be good at providing longer throw. For example, when handling 200 CFM of airflow, a 10-inch directional diffuser has a throw distance of 9 feet. For the same airflow, a 10-inch jet diffuser has a throw distance as far as 46 feet. Despite that, both diffusers produce negligible noise. So, comparing these two, directional diffuser is more suitable for home and office use because the ceiling height in these places is typically 9 to 10 feet only. Whereas jet diffuser is more suitable in places where people is very far away from the diffuser. For example, airports and the famous Qatar World Cup Stadium. As for this type of diffuser, it is known as swirl diffuser. Its throw distance is shorter than directional diffuser. This means we can allow more airflow per diffuser while ensuring the air reaches terminal velocity before entering breathing zone. 
So Swore Diffuser is suitable for large open plan office where you need a lot of airflow, but the ceiling height is 9 to 10 feet only, such that you risk getting too high of a velocity with directional diffuser. With more airflow per diffuser, the noise will be greater, but it is usually less of a concern in the case where you need to use Swore Diffuser. Other than performance related factor, Different diffuser patterns can also be due to aesthetic reason, meaning how good looking is the diffuser. For example, linear slot diffuser look a lot better than directional diffuser. And architects out there like to use linear slot diffuser. Other types of diffuser such as this diffuser, perforated diffuser and other diffuser all have their own strength and weaknesses. Therefore, it is important that we understand the characteristics of different diffuser so that when the time comes, we know which type is best for the application. So now you know why we need different types of grill and diffusers. But the question is, can you name all the grills and diffuser I showed earlier in the video? Share your answer in the comment section. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.